Hey folks, this is a demo of the Dart Package Peanut. See the linked blog post for more info. You see I have this little demo that's set up to use Flutter for Web that demos a box plot. And this link right now is dead. There's no um, nothing on that uh, github.io URL, so let's fix that. Here's my repository. I really recommend people in general use a Git GUI. I use Source Tree, which I really like. Um, it really helps, especially when you're dealing with multiple branches. Um, let me switch over to my code, and you see I have, you know, a Flutter Web app, and my code, my entry point is in the example directory. This could be any Dart Web app. I use this for Angular stuff or just other random things. Um, right now, this is a Flutter Web app. So let's go to the CLI, and let's load CLI in one half, and my um, git view in the other. I'm going to run the peanut command. So let's do um, peanut dash d example. I'm going to give it a directory. And you'll see that I'm running under the covers. I'm actually running pub run build runner build with a release flag and a bunch of other magic. And so this is building things. This is doing a full release build, which is why it takes a little bit longer. And you'll see that I've created a GH pages branch. And if I go over to my Git GUI, you'll see I have a new branch here. And it even says that, oh, my source was the master branch at this commit. And so you see actually here's master at this commit. And so now I can push it to GitHub. So I just do git push origin in this case is um, how things are set up. I can do setup stream, which basically says always track um, the branch I give and then give GH pages. So wait for git to do its thing. And you'll see now in my Git GUI, there's a GH pages branch on origin. And if I switch over to Chrome, you'll see that I have two branches now, one with GH pages. And if I navigate to that URL, which is basically my username.github.io slash the repo name, so boxplot in this case, and there's boxplot. And so if I wanted to go change something in the code, for instance, I can go into my code here. And let's say I want to set auto, auto add to false. It looks like I, I'm having some caching issues. Let's reload this. This should actually be, there it goes. So the deployed version is uh, running auto. So we're moving around without me doing anything. Let's set that to false here. Let's go back to my command line. Let's um, commit this into master branch and say no auto. And let's run peanut again. So again, a full production build using Dart to JS. So this is a little bit slower. But once this is done, it should take about 10, 12 seconds. There's the output. And if you go back and look at um, the repository or the, um, yeah, I get, guess the Git repo, you'll see here that, you know, my master branch, there's the commit that changed that. And I have an updated GH pages branch. And this is actually um, a fun way to see some of the, the cool stuff of Dart to JS. You can actually see the deltas in the JavaScript. So the JavaScript compiler here clearly was smart and realized that when I set that to false, a bunch of stuff wasn't needed. So you see more than a few lines being changed here. And you also see that the commit that this references aligns with the master commit. And again, I can push both of these to GitHub now. So now I'm going to push both the GH pages branch and master branch to GitHub. You'll see my Git GUI updates. So both of these are in sync with GitHub. And now if I go back to the UI and reload, and this is the one thing that's a little bit funky is that it can take a minute or two for GitHub to update. So you kind of have to do a bunch of refreshing. And there we have it. So now auto is no longer enabled. And so I can add things manually on my box plot. And that's how you use Peanut. Again, check out the notes below to see all the details about where to get the package and how to install.